somebody lift up your voices now and just declare, say, I'm going to see him. That I saw the Lord. Come on, lift up again, say, I'm going to see him. Not just when I pass on from this life to the next. Not just when he calls me home. Not even just when he cracks the sky. But I'm going to see him right here in this encounter. Right here in this glory. Right here in this worship. Right here in this service. I'm going to see him. He says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I saw him high and exalted. I saw him high above the earth. I saw him high above every problem. I saw him high above every issue. I saw him high above sickness. I saw him the Lord high above God depression. Him. I saw him high above death. Lord, I saw him high above depression. I saw him high, high above poverty. I saw him high above suicide. High above Six. homicide. I saw him high and lifted up. One. And the train of his robe filled the temple. I saw him high and lifted up. I saw him high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. His time was filled with the testimonies of his glory. The testimonies of his power. The testimonies of his grace. Can you lift your voice and fill this room with the Testimony of who your God is. Come on, church. Come on, lift your voice now. Come on, what did he do for you? Somebody said, my testimony is he saved me. My testimony is he delivered me. My testimony is he, he kept my mind when I thought I was going to lose it. I'm not going to go so so. I'm not going to die yet. My testimony is he kept my memory. Come on, fill this room with the train of Seven, his row. Two, Every three, victory. four. Every victory. Every victory. Every victory. We say thank you. We say you're worthy. We say you're lovely. We say you're holy. We say you're beautiful. And we fill this room. Come on, don't fill this room with applause. Fill this room with glory. Come on, those of you at home, don't fill your house just with applause. Fill it with glory. Yeah. Come on, we say 
miracles. Only Jesus, my glory, church. out of your spirit give him glory to he's the only thing that matters
says yes to the promotion. Everyone says yes to the blessing. But who says yes to the pruning? Yeah, you can prune me. Yeah, you can show me how to reshift my focus. Yeah, you can show me how to make it about you and not about me. Yeah, you can say yes in the good times, but there's something about that hard yes. I don't know if that was a prophetic flow that God gave you, but it was funny right before they began ministering that song, I was reminded of Hagar. And when she ran away from Abraham and Sarah, and God met her in the wilderness, she'd been caught in the throes of other people's plans, other people's evil, other people's wickedness and insecurity. And what's interesting about that is though Abraham is the father of faith, we know that she could see God. But in this moment where she runs away from Abraham and Sarah, the real question is, does God see me? We can come into spaces of worship like this and 
we shift our eyes toward God, but if we're honest, sometimes we're wondering, God, do you see this that's happening? So when they began to sing that song, I know that God gave me that scripture to my remembrance because when Hagar has this moment in the wilderness, it is so powerful because she comes to know God as the God who sees me. Jesus. In the midst of everything that's going on, God sees me. And not only does God see her, God gives her insight into how the plan is going to unfold. But he says, you got to go back to that place of suffering. You got to go back to that place of confusion. You got to go back to that place of inadequacy. You can't take your own plan. You can't take your own path. You got to go back to where I placed you until I release you. And what gives her the ability to do that is that when he gives her this word, he recognizes that you don't just have a plan that doesn't take into account how invisible I feel. You have a plan that sees me, sees me. You see what I'm up against and yet you've qualified me to step into this moment. Can we just take 10 seconds and thank God for seeing us? Thank you God that I made it through this week. God, you know it hurt me. God, you know it broke me. God, you know it excited me. God, you know I'm afraid of being excited. But you see me, God, and because you see me, there's also a plan connected to what you see. So I thank you, God, that you're not going to leave me. I thank you, God, that you're not going to forsake me. And I thank you, God, that you brought me into the house of the Lord to be reminded that when I lock eyes on you, everything else fades away. Thank you, God, for another beautiful Sunday to be in your presence. What a privilege it is to be seen by God. Not because I looked good and did everything the right way, but that you would take your holiness and cast your gaze on me. What a gift that is. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? You're watching online. We miss you. Can you help me welcome our online family watching from literally all over the world? Come on, we can do better than that. We're sending out some love to you right here from Dallas, Texas. No matter where you are watching from in the world, we want you to know that you have a home here at the Potter's House of Dallas. We cannot wait to host you. We have e-members who literally come to visit. They even move here. If you are an e-member and now you're in the house, can you make some noise for me? Listen, your cousins are already here. We're just waiting on you to arrive. Hallelujah. I also want to take this moment to acknowledge any first-time guests. If you've never been to the Potter's House before, if that's you, we just want to get you to stand up real quick. We just want to salute your presence. God bless you. Welcome, 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 welcome. Oh, my God. What so many people got all over. God bless you. We're so grateful to God that you are here. And, you know, there's something that I am absolutely convinced of, and that is the Spirit of the Lord rest in this house. Is that your testimony? Can you attest to the fact that week in and week out, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, the Spirit of God moves. Who was here Wednesday night? Dr. Oscar Williams preached a word. Stand up, Dr. Dr. Williams. He preached a powerful word. I mean, it was powerful. I was in Nigeria at three in the morning being blessed and filled. And can we take a moment to celebrate all of the pastors of the Potter's House. I see Dr. Crumpton and Dr. James and Dr. Joel and and Ben Shard is around here somewhere and there are others. I'm going to miss a few, but I'm just grateful for what our incredible leader has cultivated in this house. Can we take a moment and celebrate our great bishop, Bishop T.D. Jakes and First Lady Serena Jakes. We honor them so much we recognize and acknowledge the foundation and the shoulders that we're standing on right now. We're so, so very, very grateful. Uh, one announcement today and one that I am very excited about, and this is something that has been in Bishop's heart. And how many of us know Bishop didn't set out to build a big church? He set out to build big people. 
Come on, somebody. That, that is his mission as he saw God build him through, him through various things more. that God would teach Probably him and should. develop him in. He wanted to do that same thing with others, and that's why there's so many tentacles to who this great man of God is. And so on Wednesday night, what we're doing, and you heard it in the pre-show, if you were watching the pre-show, they spoke about it so eloquently, but on Wednesday night, this Wednesday, we're German. starting what we call Wednesday School. Come on, somebody. A few of you already know hey, what man, we're going to do. That was kind of cool. I, There's a passage of scripture we all know. It's in 3 John it 2. And I just it says that, days. above all, I, I wish that you would prosper <laughs> like, and be in health <laughs> even as so your funny. soul prospers. In other words, <laughs> I want to make you big. I want to make you big spiritually, and I want to make you big in every other divine and good and godly way. And so on Wednesday nights, what we're going to be doing is we're going to come together and we're going to worship Only together one. as a family. And then we're going to break out and we're going to go into breakout rooms where we can be taught by anointed teachers that. and leaders. And you Kermito, can do Q&A and have name, feedback. Graduated. It's going to be rich because Shut we want to build you. Wonderful things happen in the glory moments of Sunday, in the glory moments of Wednesday. But the there's right something say? about it being broken down and then you being able to ask questions. And I believe the fruit of this experience is going to be big people. And we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about ministry in the marketplace. Come on, somebody. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We're going to be answering some of these questions that you have. So you do not want to miss it. It's a new thing. It's going to be amazing. Oh, and by the way, your young people are invited as well. So Destiny World, there's going to be a version of this for Destiny World and Firehouse. I heard there's going to be some food involved. Come on, somebody. Just give your, give your baby a little piece of chicken and move on and come and get your word while they're getting their word. But it's incredible, and I don't want you to miss this. This is a new season. It's like Wednesday night and Sunday and vacation Bible school. Come on. All rolled up into it. Anybody want to be edified and built up for real? Jesus was a builder of people. And that's the whole vision for that. And so I'm excited about it. I can't wait to see you here Wednesday night. It's going to be all the month of October. And I don't know if it goes real well. Maybe I it'll made be it. our new normal. Well, we can just continue to be sharpened. I'm so, so those changes. excited about it. All right. Do we have any cheerful givers in God's house today? Oh, my God. I was getting... I was getting ready this morning for service, and we just got back in from Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. So, uh, it'll be Luke, we will never be two, the same again, and that's a whole no, sermon Luke, in and of two, itself. Three, but, but anyway, four, we were running around. We got, we got we landed back in the States yesterday, and then we had to go into L.A. and gotcha. minister there, and then we jumped back on the plane and came to Dallas last night. So pray for us. <laughs> but I was, I was getting ready this morning. And just this revived spirit of gratitude fell upon me. Yes, sir. And I started thinking about how merciful God has been to me. Do I have any people that recognize that, that it truly is by the mercies of God that you are not consumed, that, that his compassions have been new morning by morning? And sometimes the reality of it is we forget. Yeah. Because we've been walking in the spirit you know, for years, and, and, and we've left behind some things, you know, that used to be normal to us, right? And we're walking with the Lord, and we're serving God, and sometimes, every once in a while, it is easy to lose the deep sense of gratitude. Watch this. The type of gratitude where God, just to save me, I would praise you. I didn't need no money. I, I, I didn't need no, no partner. I didn't need anything. Just, Lord, just to be saved, just for you not dealing with me according to my iniquities or, or rewarding me according to my sin. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had about 100 people that will get back to that place where you were just grateful for his mercy. Did you praise him? That's good. That's good. And a new, a renewed sense of gratitude fell on me this morning. And I'm going to say something else. And the ability, watch this, to be merciful to others. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. See, the reason why we can't flow in forgiveness oftentimes is because we forgot how much we have been forgiven. That's good. Watch yourself, sir. <laughs> That's Bible all the way through. You got that right. But when you have a recognition 
of God's mercy and his grace and how he didn't deal with you the way he could have dealt with you when you were crazy. Oh, hey. When your actions and your lifestyle should have made outcome A, B, C, and D. Not I could have been there. I sh should have been. Oh. It brings a renewed sense of gratitude. And that channels its way into even how I give. I give because I'm grateful to God. Anybody grateful to God, you can be anywhere, in any place. Watch this. And some people got what you deserved. And it skipped over you because God decided he was going to be merciful to you. And so then biblical language like it is my reasonable service comes into play. It is my reasonable service to worship you. It is my reasonable service to say yes to you. It is my reasonable service to, to bring my tithes and my offerings into the storehouse that there might be food in your house. It is my reasonable service to advance your kingdom. It is my reasonable service to honor you every time I get an increase to give you a hallelujah. Even when it's costly, The Bible talks about those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. That's the spirit of giving. The spirit of giving is first gratitude. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Where? who kissed me this morning and woke me up in my right mind with the utility of my limbs, The very reason I have an offering is because of the generosity of God. And so it becomes my reasonable service. Every time I get an increase, I don't weigh it against my liabilities. I weigh it against his faithfulness. And I come out with a hallelujah. And I take my tithe, my 10%. And I sow it graciously and generously. Wouldn't it be like God to give you what to sow and then bless you because you sowed what he gave you to sow? It's crazy. And then I honor him with my offering. And my offering has no percentage, but it has everything to do with my heart posture. My offering is God, since you do exceedingly abundantly far above what I can ask or imagine, I stand in this place of worship. The tithe is easy. That's the tenth of my increase. The offering is different. God, this is me and you. The tithe is yours. That's our covenant. That's how we do business together, me and you, God. The offering is different. The offering is thank you. The offering has no percentage. The only requirement of the offering is that you feel it. I need to feel it. Every time I give an offering, I should feel it. It should mean something to me because if it doesn't mean anything to me, then how could it ever mean anything to God? If you need an envelope, just lift your hand. The instructions to give are on the screen. I'm so grateful for our online. Yo, is that Juno back there? We thank God for those of you. Is that Juno anywhere? Even as we travel to Nigeria, and we get feedback and social media from all over the world. There's so many people who are part of this movement. We're so grateful. Grateful for your Mike, support you really because good. giving is an act of worship. Yeah. Once you have your, your offering, Kermit, have you played on your, however you're giving with a mobile device in your hand, do me a favor. Let's stand together and we're going to present it to God. I love how the scripture says that, that when we bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse, there might be food in his house. And we're so grateful that there is food in the potter's house. Come on, I'm not just talking about spiritual. I can't respond. I can't respond. Yeah, we look at can. all that we are blessed to do on a on a day to day basis. We don't Luke, shout at the mountaintops. We just do it. Right. We see needs and we facilitate those needs because God has blessed us in such a way. But isn't it interesting how it says that we bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse that there might be food in my house? Prove me in this if I want to open up the windows of heaven 
and pour out such a blessing. And one of the reasons why I'm lifting it up and I lift it up to the Lord is I'm also lifting it up to the place where the blessing will flow from. Yeah, the first time in my life. Tired. Well, God is going to begin to rain on the seeds of my efforts, the seeds of my labor. That's all in the promise. It's crazy. We'll talk about that. It's like I'm crazy. lifting it up to Contents. the place that God is going to part and Contents crack. For another day. And that blessing is going to flow down on my seeds and cause increase. And there's certain seeds that it's not even about money. I, I, I need you to rain upon my physical health. I need you to rain upon my child's mind. I need you to rain upon my boss because he and Jesus are out of crazy. I need you to rain upon my co-workers, and that is the spirit in which we give. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to give. And what is so interesting is that what we are giving is not even necessarily our own. Trying to find you put in our hand what we're extending to back to you. And then you God, turn around and increase us. God, this is too be much. You are too good. You're overwhelmingly amazing. And so we thank you, for we recognize that every increase comes from you. Hallelujah. And so it is our reasonable service to extend our gestures of generosity and reciprocity as to the abundant generosity that we walk in every single day. Thank you for your mercy. And God, as we give, continue to build this church that we might continue to have an even more divine reach into the nations of the world as we glorify your name and we send divine truths and spiritual principles out to change lives and families for generations. And God, we thank you that as we do this, God, you will multiply every seed sown in our lives. And we thank you, Lord God, for breakthrough and even the rebuking of the devourer for our sake. Hallelujah. We thank you that this is also spiritual warfare. And it rebukes the enemy in every place that he would attempt to encroach upon what you have offered and provided to us. We love you, God. And we thank you, God, that we'll be better as a result of the harvest that comes from this moment of generosity and faith. We love you. Bless your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's give family. Here we go. One, two, three.
There's a few people in here who know exactly what that means. Some people shouldn't even be in this room, but because they made it to the other what side, the they have a different kind of praise. You see, some people are here by luxury, but there are some people in this room who should quite literally not be here, but because God kept pulling them through time after time after time, when you start letting them have testimony service, we might lose this place. Because if they had a chance to really huh? cry out in the way that their worship could let them, their journey would shake this room up. I'm crazy enough to believe that if you gave them about five seconds, Justin, that they would go yeah, ahead yeah, and turn this place out.
and anointing that works here, work over there too. Has God ever taken you to foreign territory? A new job, a new opportunity, and you're wondering, does it work here the same way it works there? And God says, you're asking me the wrong question. You need to start asking me for the nations. If I sent you into the position, I've already enlarged your territory. So start asking me for what you want to see happen in this territory. I started asking for miracles. I started asking for breakthroughs. So when you ask God to enlarge your territory, don't just do it so you can look big. Do it so you can start asking God, who's going to occupy this territory? God, give me enough room to change a generation. God, give me enough room to yes, change God. my family system. Yeah, God, brother. give me enough room that I bring the right opportunities into this territory. Because I don't want to just be big for big sake. I want to make an impact that I'm this is the kingdom of heaven on the earth. Four. Out of five. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Watch yourself tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. Brothers and sisters. Okay. No, because I already know we got a few crazes in this room. 
before we can experience you got it, Mike. the enlarging of our territory. What tempo was that? There is one step. Just one step. I'm gonna take it down to 157. On the way here, Doctor Phil, I had a water bottle green. on the plane, and you said green. I yes, drank out Thank of you, it. And there was some water in it left, but there was Minor, a lot of right? air okay. in it as well. And the more that the pressure began to change, that water bottle began to take on a different shape. The pressure was changing the shape of that water bottle. Which is, I would say just be flexible, but she kind of going I was thinking right to now. myself <laughs> that this key. water bottle had become Thank you, Jesus. really Thank the you. perfect illustration of what took place, gosh, almost 20 some years ago. Uh -huh. When the pressure changed what I thought about myself, what I thought about God, what I thought about my territory. Mm. And some of us have shrunken territory, not because it's what God wanted, but because the pressure yeah. changed the mentality of what we thought was possible for us. We started off big, dreaming big, thinking big, big faith, but the pressure changed us. Come on. When I introduced my father at Woman That Art Loose in 2011, not only did the song work, I but wasn't it took planning over. on going into ministry. I trust the man of God, <laughs> All I thought to I myself is spirit, with God. this misshaped spirit, uh -huh. this misshaped perception that I now have. I'm going to present it to the world and I'll say, this is my deformity. This is what I went through, how shame changed me, how guilt twisted and turned me. This is who I am. And I was prepared to just live in that existence and consciousness and tell whoever understood, got it, and whoever didn't, didn't, and that was fine for me. Then I began to go on this journey of recognizing that just because life has twisted you and turned you and misshaped you, it doesn't have to keep you in that form. Just as with a water bottle on a plane, when you begin to twist the cap and open it up, it takes its form again. There is something powerful that happens in our spirit and our hearts and our minds when we open up and refuse to settle for being deformed. Before your territory can be enlarged, your capacity must be enlarged so that you have the capacity to be the person who can govern that, in, that territory with integrity and innovation and wisdom and creativity. We have an incredible speaker in the house this morning whose gift and assignment is to help us create more capacity for the territory that is assigned to our names. Dr. Anita Phillips is no stranger to the Potter's House. She is a trauma therapist, a life coach and minister and she is equipped to speak to the several different facets that connect mental and spiritual health. But one of the things that I love the most about her is that I attribute our sisterhood, our friendship to the increase of the capacity that God allowed to become a part of my destiny. She is a New York Times best-selling author. I said she's a New York Times best-selling author of her very first book, The Garden Within, where the war with your emotions ends and your most powerful life begins. Let me tell you why this is powerful. For so long, faith and emotional wellness and mental health were separated in conversations, but we're coming into a space where we recognize that they cannot be separated and we be all of who God has called us to be. God is so serious about this work that he took her first book and said, I'm gonna make sure that I thrust it into the national yeah. spotlight so that everyone from Oprah to TBN to Bishop T.D. Jakes are talking about what can happen through this book. This is not just a book that 
tells you about yourself, she has so graciously and generously shared her own deformities and her own enlarging capacity. And so it is with great honor and privilege that I welcome to the platform my sister, my friend, Dr. Anita Phillips. Can we give her a Potter's House welcome? Wow, my God. Wow. <laughs> that was crazy. Well, bless the Lord. Don't do that. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We as the church are standing on the precipice of a shift that is the last day of us being so powerful. The bride he wants to come back for. We were headed there a long time, but we're right there ready. And I believe that this understanding of how we are created spiritually, emotionally, mentally, biologically, that when we grip that, we are standing in a power we were created to wield. And so I'm so honored to do this work that God's called me to do, but it's not just about us feeling better. It's about us being powerful as a church. And I'm so honored. I'm going to pray in a second, but 